Here we go, boys. Here we go. Third period. The Stanley Cup. No! Penalty kill! Penalty kill! Good job! The Stanley Cup is in the building! Dylan Strom! Dylan Strom! Come on, that's one! Power play! We need another! Corey Perry! He fucking does it again! Third period! No! Ever seen Adam? That fucking bastard! Five minutes! Four minutes! Three minutes! Score a goal, you bastards! No! <laughs> no! And the Columbus Blue Jackets! They beat the Arizona Coyotes! <laughs> In the third period, Emerson Edom gets a last fucking six minute goal! After we fucking tied it! You fucking hockey gods! You let me tie it! In the Western Conference Finals and the Stanley Cup Finals! And we still lose! Go fuck yourself, you motherfuckers! Oh, oh my god! I don't freaking believe it! Jesus, man. Game 7. We could have had back-to-back -back Stanley Cups with a President's Trophy in there as well. But no, it wasn't meant to be this year. A Game 7 loss in the Stanley Cup Finals. Oh, man. Uh, that's a rough one, boys. That is a rough one. I was having high hopes for this year. Even though our regular season wasn't the greatest, man. We put together a team that just would not lose in the playoffs. Going back to the Western Conference Finals, we were down 2-0 in the third period in another Game 7. All right, We were able to come back, tie it up in the third, and then win it in overtime. And then in the Stanley Cup Finals, same freaking thing. All right, We were down 3-2. We went with uh, Lou Morris on the first line. And we actually won 3-0. And then we left him on the first line. I thought that it would be enough. Keith Yandel came back from his injury. We were down 2 0 in the third period. We actually came back with an amazing speech from Keith Yandel telling us all he probably played his last game of hockey in the NHL. We tied it up, but Emerson Edom gets that third goal in the third period. And the whole thing, and the whole time in the playoffs, I was saying, you know, we need to focus on getting three goals before the end of regulation. And what happens in the Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals? We lose 3-2 to two in regulation. Fucking hell, man. Alright, so, I mean, a successful year, but I, was, I, I had my eyes on Dynasty. I really did. And now this team, I think, is going to take a step or two back just because... Guys like Keith Yandel, Corey Perry, they are really hitting older age now, all right? So let's uh, let's simulate up ahead here. Actually, you know what? Before we simulate, let me... Yeah, you know what? We'll do this first. We'll do the comments and the fan art first. We have some very funny uh, fan art in this one. But first, the comments. And look at this. Attention! I, Andrew Barraway, owner of the Arizona Coyotes franchise, am sick and tired of general manager Johnny Superb, man. What the hell? How could you be sick and tired of me? We have not agreed on the way the team should be run for the past five years now, and I've kept him because of his because he has been successful. You damn right I've been successful. I've turned this this damn franchise around. Despite making it to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, generally speaking, I am extremely disappointed at the team's lack of effort throughout the regular season and told Jim Superman that if he didn't win the Cup, he would be fired. This is news to me. I didn't know that. What the hell? I'm a man of my word, and I say with this with great respect to GM Superman that he has been relieved of his duties as president of hockey operations and general manager of Air of the Arizona Coyotes. I wish him all the best, but we will move for or we will move on and continue to succeed. Thank you. What the hell? Go fuck yourself, Andrew Barraway. Who the hell are you to tell Jim Superman that I'm fired? I've turned this franchise around. All right, all the fans they're not gonna fire me. They're gonna sign petitions and get me back out here. And I'll tell you this: I'm gonna turn my cheek to this mass of disrespectful slap in the face. I'm gonna turn my other cheek, but if you bring this shit to me again and piss me off even more, I'll sentence your goofy ass to the Phantom Zone, and I'll get the one and only General Zod after you, alright? So, don't screw with me, Andrew Barraway. I'm really pissed off. How are you gonna send the GM a freaking message like that the night that you lost the Stanley Cup? It's still the goddamn 7th of June, you jackass, goofball McGundy, Andrew Barraway. I, I swear, I'll get General Zod in your ass, alright? Don't tempt me. Next freaking comment from Paul Biz Nasty. Oh, great. Here we go again. That's what you get, Johnny. If you had me on the team, I could have riled up those players and carried the team to victory. Way better than that cheap knockoff. Lou Morris? Oh, man. Don't say that to his face. He'll judo flip you down to the ground and knock you the hell out with his ground and pound. That dusty old fuck Perry <laughs> and that fucking burger guy combined. Instead, me, Tarky, Edom, Dadunov, and Polak are all hitting up the club tonight to sell it. Oh, my God. Add Biz Nasty to the assholes. I will never sign in another GM mode. God damn it, Biz Nasty. There's a reason that you weren't playing on my damn team. Get the hell out of here. In the last comment, Lou Morris for captain, Oliver Ekman Larson for alternate, and the Big Mac for alternate. All right, well, you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason. I don't know what the team's going to look like come next year, but I do think a year of all, all alternates is needed for respect of Captain Keith Yandel, all right? I mean, say what you want. We didn't win the Stanley Cup this year, but... 
you know, as a Toronto Maple Leaf fan in real life, give me back-to-back -back years where we win the Stanley Cup President's Trophy and lose in the Stanley Cup Finals. I'll take that any day of the week, all right? I mean, look at what this franchise has done. We all know what the Arizona Coyotes were before GM Superb Man took, uh, took over, all right? But look what we've had now. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years in a row we've made the playoffs. Yeah, we've had some years where 85 points made the playoffs, 89 points made the playoffs, fine. But out of those seven years, three first-round exits, two second-round exits, a Stanley Cup win, and a Stanley Cup loss. I think, you know what, that's a very successful franchise. And you know what, man, we haven't, uh, we've kept it kind of realistic here as well, which has been nice, all right? So it's going to be an interesting offseason here. But now let's get to the funny part. Let's get to some of these fan art. And look at this one. <laughs> we have hope. Fuck you, hockey gods. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got angry there at the end of uh, Game 7. You know, they, they, they gave it to us. Like, it was a Game 7 in the Western Conference Final. We came back in Game 7 of the third period to, to move off to the Stanley Cup Finals. Then in Game 7 of the Finals, we came back in the third. It just seemed like it was all set up perfectly for us. And the hockey gods just shit all over that story. All over it. God, man. Fucking hockey gods. Next, uh, hashtag road to redemption. Hell yeah, man. We already have our redemption hats back on. We're coming back bigger and better next year, man. Absolutely. Retire number three. Oh, my God, Nick Foligno. Retire number three, Arizona. Thank you. Hashtag Captain Keith. Nick Foligno. Coach Tar... Oh, for fuck's sake. It's never going to end. Coach Tarkey told us in the second intermission how Vancouver <laughs> never gave... <laughs> never gave... Never gave him the chance. To, never gave him the chance. Now he's giving us all the chance to win the cup. Go, go, kill yourself, Nick Foligno. <laughs> Keith Yandel. I told everyone in the locker room that during that during injury I had suffered in this man. This English is horrible. In this series, that this is my last game. I said, I, I said, you say this, but my days of hawker are over. Oh my god. I think this is on purpose. I can't even fucking read this shit. The font is so small and the spelling is horrible. All right, well, whatever. You guys can pause it and read it. Jesus. Harvey, the Big Mac McMillan. The C for the next year. I don't know. We're going to have to figure out the next captain. Hopeless. Oh, Brendan Hope, after allowing that goal from Emerson Edom, he felt hopeless, man. That's a ball buster goal right there. <laughs> we have hope. This is my... Oh, that's... Yeah, Captain Keith Yandel pissed off. <laughs> This is my last game. I will do anything for us to win. And I expect the same from you. Well, we tied it up, Captain Keith. But Emerson Edom, I mean, when we were riding that wave of emotion, he found a way to score a goal, man, and killed all of that mo. Uh, 2BC Daily News. <laughs> Light a candle for Captain Yandel. Oh, that's a sweet headline right there. Keith Yandel and the Coyotes playing in the Stanley Cup Finals. Keith Yandel was returning from an injury. He was starting off slow. Out of nowhere, Keith Yandel was playing his heart out, but Yandel announces, we still have hope, but I'm likely to retire this offseason. He was playing so strong, so is, so is his team. Strom then sniped one just behind the hash marks, then Corey does the same on the PP, but just one minute later, Edom scores the game-winning goal. Oh my god, what a headline, what a newspaper, I'd buy it. <laughs> Retire number three. Hashtag thanks, Captain Keith. Oh, here it is. 2006 to 2022. What a beast. Uh, adversity is a wind that tears everything from us except for who we truly are. What a quote. Keith Yandel. That's what he... I kind of said something along those lines. I think I butchered the quote, but it was... Yeah, there you go. You found the right one. Good job. Rymo Tarkey wins the jack after... He traded me. Clint Windsor and Ryan Pulock for Mikhail Grigorenko in Vancouver. That was a terrible trade. And he is a terrible GM. See you next year in the cup finals. Oh, wait. You won't even make the playoffs. <laughs> Ah, it's all coming back to bite me in the ass now, says Rymo Tarki in regards to Superb Man. See, this is, this is what you get as a GM, man. When you win, you, you know, it's all about the players. It's all about the, the fans. When you lose, it's all on you. For God's sakes, man. Everyone's blaming GM Superb Man now. Uh, better luck next year at <laughs> the Big Mac playing golf. Keith Yandel, that's a nice one right there. Really, Johnny? Really? I think it was because I put, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lou Morris on the first line with Anze Kopitar. Hey, we're for game six. We won three nothing, jackass. For God's sakes. Uh, and last but not least, what's this? A Captain Keith Yandel movie? We have hope to Keith Yandel story. Bradley Cooper is Keith Yandel. Morgan Freeman is GM Superman. <laughs> Morgan Freeman, that's an honor. I got Morgan Freeman, one of the best actors, to play me. Fucking brilliant. <laughs>
my god. You guys are really going nuts now with these uh, fan art. This is awesome. Big Max, Lou Morris, coming soon. An Arizona Coyotes picture production. Oh my god, you guys are great. All right, so thank you for the comments. Thank you for the fan art. That's hilarious. You know what? Well, we'll do a simulation here. Yeah, we'll just go up and we'll skip all this crap. Hang on a second here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. See, Andrew Barraway, you're giving me mixed signals now. Yeah, he's saying I'm happy with the year. It's probably a troll. What the fuck? All right, so your Stanley Cup champions, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough one. I really wanted to turn this team into a dynasty, man. And two Stanley Cups in a row. Now you're setting yourself up for three Stanley Cups in a row. That's nice. Now we got to aim for two in three years, which is still nice, but that's not dynasty. You need to get, you need to get like three and four or three and five or something like that. Four and, four and six, maybe, you know, something that really gets people uh, talking about your team. So it's a little bit of a step back this year, but I want to see what our team's going to look like next year because we do have a lot of players that are, are still getting better. But then, then again, we have a lot of players who uh, might be getting worse, right? And the question is, guys like Keith Yandel and Corey Perry, are they going to come back on this team or are we going to have to find somebody to replace them? All right, so here they go, retirements. Are we going to lose anybody? Corey Perry. Oh, Captain Keith Yandel hasn't retired. Look at that. So the pep talk that he had in the locker room saying that he might have played his last NHL game. I guess he feels like the old legs can go one more year. Corey Perry is deciding to go out on top. All right, I guess he doesn't want to come back. He's slowing down a little bit. He he realizes, hey, Stanley Cup game seven, it could be it could it could be a lot worse than that. So I guess we lost Corey Perry, which hurts us. But Keith, Captain Keith Yandel's still on the team, Now that's going to actually raise a lot of uh, different comments. You guys saying that maybe now we should trade them, but I still have the same mindset about Captain Keith. You can't trade him. You absolutely can't. But uh, we're gonna have to figure out where he fits in on the team. Maybe he's just a depth player now, right? So. Very interesting. So we're here, up here at the draft. We don't have a good draft pick this year. We do have a first, but that's just ours, right? So I'll just take a quick look at uh, scouting report. But I mean, we're not getting a top ten pick. Look at this guy, Shane Commodore. Oh my! If that's a true, if that's a true potential, he's a right wing sniper with five star. Imagine him with Dan McKenzie. Holy crap! All right, but no, there's no way we're getting any anyone like that. So let's see. Is there any deep? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So there. I have a deep pick. I might be able to get... I can get this guy for sure. Eugene Lifton, defensive defenseman. If he's got the uh, four and a half star potential, I can definitely pick up one of them. Um, my pick is going to be like 29th, so I might be able to get one of these guys as well. I don't know. I don't know how late my pick is going to be. All right, so... Or I, don't, I, I know how late my pick is going to be. I don't know when these guys are going to go. So I'll hold on to my draft pick. I really don't think I'm going to make any trades here. I think the best thing to do would be to get as quickly as we can to preseason because... I'm not going to make any trades. I still feel like we have a good roster. Free agency, I don't really have that much cap space. So, yeah, you know what? We just got to get to the resign stage. So, you know what? Before we do that, let's quickly take a look at our roster right now. I'd like to see Keith Yandel. He decided to stay on. All right. But uh, hope. All right. Let's see Keith Yandel. Where is he? Keith Yandel. Oh, look at that. He was an 82. He went back up to an 83. So, maybe the playoff run boosted him a little bit. Who knows, man? Captain Keith Yandel. All right. So, he's not going anywhere. Very interesting. So, yeah, let's just do the draft. I'd like to... One of the new things I want to do with uh, with the GM mode... You know what? I'll, I'll talk about that after. Um, so, look at that. Yeah, the Washington Capitals are going number one. So, I'll be... I'll remember to check out that draft pick for you guys. I know you want to see that guy, right? But, you know, I'll do my due diligence here. I'll just take a quick look at any of the trade bait that I may have. Anze Kopitar, two years left. Now, you know what? We're coming right back with Anze Kopitar. We signed him to that $9 million deal seven years back, like six years ago. So, I want him to play his career here now. All right, he's brought us to the Stanley Cup Finals two, two years in a row. And he's our first line center still. I think he's, does he still have the four-star potential? He's still got the four-star potential. So, he's all right. Okay. Uh, no trade bait in there. Uh, no trade bait in there. I'm going to hold on all these guys. These guys are our wingers of the future. Trade bait. No, they're all right wingers, but still, I'm not trading them. And defensively, Barry and Ekman Larson. You know, I wouldn't... They got good contracts, but they only have one year left after this year. Then you'd have to re-sign them at 31 years old, which isn't horrible. Play them for another year, then trade them at 32 years old. But if we can, if we're thinking about maybe moving up a few of these younger defensemen, if they get a good jump in the offseason, especially with Keith Yandel still being on the team, that's why I want to get to preseason in this video. Yeah, you know what? Let's get to preseason. So we're not making any trades. We're not doing anything like that. We're just going to draft. We're going to be like the Detroit Red Wings and just draft, all right? So the Washington Capitals drafted uh, that Commodore guy, so I will certainly take a look at him after I get a chance. Uh, okay, so let's see. So there's three potential players here. There's a left wing. 
Two-way forward, left wing power forward, and a defensive defenseman. Uh, Strosh, Ray Stroshine. And you know what? You know what? I Aubrey might be the right bet here. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know. He's better projected. That's the only thing I'm going off of here. But Ray is one year younger, and he's a two-way forward. I already have a power forward in McMillan. I could use a two-way forward in my top six of the future. So you know what? A left wing two way forward. Let's try it out. Strosheen, Strosheine, Strosheine, whatever. All right, there's my first round pick. There you go. No trades. There you go. Let's simulate ahead here. So, second round pick. Do we have another one of those guys I could pick up? No, we don't have another one of those guys. All right, so that's okay. Uh, defensive defenseman, defensive defenseman, two way forward, another two way. You know what? I'm going to pick up another two way forward. Sylvan Bernier. Let's see. Yeah, he's only got the three star, but I mean, I haven't uncovered everybody yet, so I'm going to. Going to take a guess with that guy. I'm, I'm drafting for player types now. Don't want any more snipers. Got too many of them. All right. And my third, I will get a... Oh, there's a power forward. There's a center. Is there any centers? The DD Center is a playmaker. I don't really... Stoner is a playmaker. Don't really want... No. No, no, no. We'll grab one of these guys here. Who do I want? Defensive defenseman. Left-handed, 18-year-olds. Yeah, there you go. OHL defenseman. There you go. All right, so let's simulate the rest of the draft. Now, I was talking about what I wanted to do in the GM modes now. Usually, when I simulate through the offseason, I get to preseason. Then the next video, we start the simulation, and we go up to, like, the all-star break. But I want to fit a video in between the offseason and the simulation. I want to, you know, dedicate a whole video to just previewing the league because we're eight years in now, so I think, like, Every year, I should go through every team's lineup just quickly so you guys can, you know, pause the video and see what players are playing on which team. You know, I want to get a sense of which which teams are the powerhouses now. So I think I might start doing that. That's not going to be this video. I think I'm going to set it up for the next video. So the simulating for year number eight is still like, uh, what, uh, two videos away, right? So that's what I'm saying. Um, we'll see what we do when we get to it, though. So what's the contract length that I'm working with right now? What is it? One, two... Three, three years for Yakupov and Barzell. Three years for Horvat and McMillan. Three years for, yeah, three years seems to be the perfect bet. So you know what? Well, I can go longer than three years, but it just, that's, yeah, that's all. I'm just making a mental note. All right, so Brandon Hope, he wants a real deal. Yeah, I don't mind giving it to him. Five years. Looks like he drops off. Five years would take him to 33 years old. Yeah, you know what? Five years makes sense for me. All right, so we'll go down to five and a half mil. I might be able to get it down to 5.250. There you go. I'll try to go that low. I want to save as much money as I can here. Uh, defensively, Chris Letang, 87 years old now. 87 years old. 87 overall. He's 35 years old. So do I want to sign into a two-year deal? I don't know if I want to sign into a two-year deal because if he drops to 83, I won't be able to move that contract. So you know what? Let's just drop him down to a one-year deal. All right? This guy can, can retire here as well. Whatever. Uh, unless, unless of course, we have a bad regular season. Then I can trade him. Um, but 6 mil. We can go down to, yeah, you know what? 5.250. Oh, there you go. Just as much as Brandon Hope. Latang had a big influence over us during the playoffs this year. Captain Keith Yandel. What kind of contract does he want? He wants 4 mil. Oh, my God. Well, he is still 83 overall. He's gone up a little bit. He's still got some good puck skills and senses category. And I could use him as a depth player. That's the thing. I mean, during the playoffs, 15 points, he was a plus one, right? I could use him as a depth player. It all depends on what those younger guys come up and play. So I got I got to sign him. I have to sign him. All right. So Captain Keith gets a one-year uh, one deal, 3.750 for one year. There you go. DeFreeze. Now let's, let's take a look at some of this. If I jack the year up, see what I mean? DeFreeze is actually going to turn into a decent little player here. And he's left-handed. Oh, he's right-handed. There you go. Okay, so... We'll go three years for DeVry. There you go. We'll get him on the, the contract that Barzell and everyone else is on. Uh, there you go. Three years at 1.650 for for DeVry. Uh, Forbert. I think I can, you know, let me just hold on to these guys for now. Gortzen. All right. So was that was that my second round pick? That did not. And that was my third round pick. All right. So don't worry about that guy. Uh, Forbert. I'll hold off on you. Lucas Petrie. He's going to want a real deal now. Oh, God, yeah. There you go, three mil. Oh, he wants a real. He wants real money. Um, <clears throat> what do I want to do here? Five mil. E you know what? I hold off on Lucas Petrie. I want to see how much money I have over left over after I do all this wiggle. All right, uh, Sylvan Bernier, two way forward. All right, so it wasn't the greatest draft pick. Uh, Roussel, I got to get Roussel back. Hold on for him. Anderson, hold on on him. Yeah, I'll sign this guy. Get these guys on two way deals. There you go. There you go. Very nice. 
Uh, Bulikov. Shro, yeah, this is the the first overall pick, right? Or the first rounder? Yeah, so he wasn't he wasn't a four and a half star, but he's 19 years old, already pretty much 70 overall with four star potential. That's a pretty good draft pick. I'll take that. And I won't sign him just yet. He can play in the minors still. All right, and centers. Uh, no, I don't need to sign him. I can release you. I don't need you. There you go. And McMillan, Smith. I got to resign these guys as well. So let's just get uh, <coughs> Captain Yandel, Chris Letang. And Hope signed and see how much money we have left over. I have to sign, what is it, Petrie. Kopitar's coming up next year, which won't be a big deal because I'll have more cap space available. All right. Uh, luckily, Corey Perry, like, I'm not luckily Corey Perry's gone, but that did free up a lot of cap space. So we only have $11 million to sign these guys. I got, uh, yeah, I got Hope under, uh, under contract, which is good. So who do I want first? Lucas Petrie's got to go first. The thing is, if I sign him to a long term, then I can't really sign anyone else, right? So I don't want to sign him to long term just yet. What kind of seasons has he had so far? 25 goals, 25 goals. Yeah, he was useful in the playoffs. He had 19 points, 19 points. Yeah, you know what? Lucas Petrie, he deserves a real contract. Four years. There you go. Four years at less than $7 million. Uh, There you go. 6.75. All right, for Lucas Petrie for $4 million. Uh, Anderson, can I sign him to a two-way deal? Or is it only one way? It looks like it's... I might be able to get him for a two-way deal. I'll try that. Jesper Anderson. Oh, it's not Joachim Anderson. It's Jesper, right. Uh, Wiggle. This guy is depth, right? Bunch of depth players. Yeah, might as well sign all these depth players again. As long as I can get them on two-way deals. Uh, two-way, yeah. All right, works for me. There you go. Wiggle, he's back on the team, hopefully. Forbert, same thing. Two-way, yeah, works for me. There you go. Very nice. Uh, McMillan. Yeah, I want this guy back as well. This guy can be very good for depth down the middle. All right. So, And he's actually a third-line checker. There you go. I can have him on the uh, fourth-line center if uh, Zach Smith is a little bit too old now. I want to get Zach Smith back, though. He's pretty good. Let me just get these guys signed first and see how much cap space I have. So we wouldn't have been able to afford all these guys anyways if, uh, say, Corey Perry stayed alongside of Keith Yandel. It just wouldn't have worked out. So it's actually good that we, you know, we're going through this turnover right now. Yeah, we only have $4 million left. i got to get Roussel and Zach Smith both under contract here. Hey, yeah, I can afford them both. All right, so one year, $2 million for Roussel. And Zach Smith, we're going to go one year, 2.5. That would take it up to, yeah, we can afford that. Yep, we can afford it. There you go, 2.45. All right, so we can just afford everyone. So it was good news that Corey Perry retired, so I didn't have to make a decision. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and we also need a backup goalie as well. Screw Langhammer. I'm not bringing Langhammer back. We've seen how bad that guy can play. We got to get somebody else in here who can win us some games. We got to. We got to. That's the thing. We barely missed. I barely made the playoffs this year, so we want to make sure that we come back stronger. So I'm going to release Langhammer. I'm going to sign Olmark. Uh, you know what, Olmark? You want a real deal, so I'm going to release you. Actually, there you go. I want to see if I can find a better backup goalie in free agency. All right, there you go. Very nice. Two years, 8.50. All right, so we got everyone under contract now. Yes, we do. Very nice. So let's jump ahead to free agency. We should have that guy signed. Let's see. Do we get him back on the team? Come on now, game. There you go. Yeah, all right. So he's back on the team. So let's jump to free agency. So here we go, free agency. We just have over a million dollars to work with. There's not going to be any uh, players that I go after. Oh, look at that. DeCall is in the... Uh, he didn't jump too much. Yeah, he's already 26 years old. I wouldn't say he jumps at all. Maybe I should try to sign him to a two-way deal. Can I get him to a two-way deal? No, I can't. He actually wants a real deal. All right, screw that. No, we're not going after any of these guys. I am going to get my eye on a goaltender, though. All right. Actually, get this. No, no, no. I don't want to sign that Drew guy. All right, so let's see here. I need somebody who is less than 1.2. All these guys are a little bit too much. There you go. Who's this? Bartasak. Uh, he's got some 78s there in the reflex category. I don't like that. Let's see, Kozen. Uh, he's got some 70s in that first category. I don't like that. Olmark, I already had him on the team. Yeah, Olmark looks like the best bet here. Yeah, I could afford him, so I'll just get him right back on the team. Bo. Yeah, Bo's got, no, Bo's got some good, yeah, Bo's got some good, uh, reflexes stat. Yeah, you know what? I'll just go with one of these guys. Jack Flynn. Bo. Jack Flynn. Yeah, you know what? Jack Flynn, I think, is a little bit better. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll go with this guy, Jack Flynn. See how he works. There you go. Very nice. All right, so there's the goaltender signed. So now let's get to the preseason. 
and see what our roster looks like so then you guys can uh, make decisions on because I, I still think a trade or two may happen before the season happens we have we might have like nine defensemen who are capable of playing in the NHL this year right so let's jump to that preseason all right so here we are in September 2022 the beginning of preseason so let's take a look at our roster and see what our new look Arizona well it shouldn't be new look but you know the young guns let's see if they're ready to start playing in the NHL or not it's gonna be interesting to see our defensive core this year right so uh, Hope and Strong it's saying to go with. No, I don't want Strong. I wanted that uh, Flynn guy. Yes, I wanted Jack Flynn. There you go. Strong, you can go back down to the minors. So I know he doesn't have the greatest stats, but I'm going for that reflexes category. The reflexes category doesn't have a 70 overall in it. If you look at Langhammer last year, he was like an 83, but he had a bunch of 70s in that reflexes category, and he had the worst stats ever. All right, so I really think that reflexes category mean a lot when it comes to goaltending. Uh, so Hope, yep, we know Hope is in there. All right, so let's take a look at some of these guys. Ooh, I don't like that. Well, the thing is, they're all listed as top six defensemen now. Well, not all, sorry. Gordon is still... Yeah, Gordon is still down there. But Rupert, think about Rupert. Look at his defensive category. 84, 86, 84. He's a decent body checker. Yeah, this guy should be playing up in the NHL now. I'd want him to get some ice time. All right, and Gattenby, same thing. His defensive awareness is pretty good. He's a little bit more... Like, he's a two-way, so I'd want his offensive categories a little bit better. But they're not there just yet. Actually, Gattenby is not one of the guys. What am I talking about? Gattenby is not one. Uh, Rupert, Gordon, oh, he must be already on the team, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. DeVree, DeVree, uh, there you go, DeVree, there he is, um, his defense awareness is only 80, body checking, yeah, you could use another good year, but the thing is, if you want these guys to get better, you gotta play them in the NHL, what about Captain Keith, Captain Keith Yandel dropped down to an 81 after that, so he got his last contract, then dropped, dropped down to an 81, so, Interesting year. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. DeVries, you know what? So DeVries and Rupert are both listed as top six. So we got to figure out, do we want them to play in the NHL? One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's why I didn't sign Latang to a uh, uh, two-way deal, or two-year deal. He's still got the three and a half star, though. So he, he, should, he should be okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so there's the six defensemen. Forwards, uh, Lou Morris. Lou, look at Lou Morris now, boys. He's getting a little bit better. 85 overall. <laughs> Very nice. All that training in the UFC. He's burning that fat off. Uh, Matt Bolesky, 79. I'm going to just scratch these guys for right now. McMillan, I'll just scratch you. Okay, so that's everybody. Anderson, Kostitsin, Karstelov. What about uh, Travis Little? Is he ready yet? Travis Little, he's 79 overall. He had one year in the AHL. Okay, so this year I really want him to have a good year in the AHL. Hopefully this guy gets better, man. He may not. Who knows? I've had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of duds in this GM mode commentary. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the team that we have. I go best lines. All right, it's going with uh, McMillan, who's now an 87 overall, so he got a little bit better. His defensive awareness is now at 83, which is respectable, so that's real good news. All right, Petrie is now a 91 overall. Oh, God, Petrie's having some good stats. Matthew Barzell, 89, so it looks like he stayed the same. His passing is still at 86. Um, his defensive awareness is a little bit better now, though, as well. What, was it 85 before? Did that get better? I don't, I don't remember. But, damn, he's got a hard shot. If only he had a more accurate shot, all right? Anze Kopitar is an 86. Let Anze Kopitar has dropped to three and a half. All right, but we got him. This is his last year of his contract. So I think to start the year, we should go Barzell with Petrie and the Big Mac, McMillan. Sure, that would make, that would make sense for me. Uh, right, left-handed shot, left-handed shot. Oh, actually, Barzell is right-handed. Is Barzell right-handed? Yeah, he is right-handed. So we can go Petrie on the left or McMillan on the left. You guys can uh, come up with that. All right, Horvat and Pierlini, Kopitar, uh, Roussel, McMillan, Smith, Strom. Yeah, so we're missing Corey Perry there on that second line now. All right, that is a, uh, a little bit of a gap, but we can always go Lou Morris now on the second line because of that, uh, that good overall. And again, you know, last year we had the playmaker-sniper combination the entire time, and it... I don't know if it helped us out, right? And then we got McMillan. We played much better. So now you have two playmakers, two snipers, and then two gritty type players, like a power forward and then a grinder, right? So I think Kopitar and Yakupov would be enough to get her done. But uh, I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And then you go Pierlini, Horvat, and Strom. So Strom doesn't look like he's getting any better than 83 overall. So he's fine on the third line. The third line has been great for us in previous years. And then McMillan, Zach Smith, and Roussel because Lou Morris has moved up from the fourth line. All right. So our offense, I still like it. 
I still think that this offense could be good enough to get us back to the playoffs for sure. And once we're in the playoffs, we're a good team, right? But is our defense good enough this year? And this is what I was talking about, Tyson Berry and Ekman Larson. Maybe it is time to move one of these guys out. I think this would be good enough to get back to the playoffs, but... You know, Keith Yandel on the top six with Jesse Mills. You know, this was the exact same line that we had last year, basically. Well, when we made the, the trade for Chris Letang and McMillan, it changed it up. But, uh, you know, that's interesting. So let me know what you guys think about our roster. Uh, Portland, all right. Little, I want to get on the first line, and I want to get some uh, playmakers alongside. Uh, basically, I want Little to have like 50 goals down there in the AHL this year. So I want to just stack him up with a bunch of playmakers on that first line. Power play, all that stuff, right? We really want to play Little on the AHL this year. And our three defensemen. They are listed as, there's two of them that are listed as top six, DeVries and Rupert, but uh, I don't know if they're ready just yet. All right, so you guys are going to have to chime in here. What should we do? What should we do with this roster? Should I give them the chance with the one-month simulation, or should I make a trade or two? Let me know what you guys think. And also, the next video, I don't, I don't want to say that we're not going to do the simulation, but I want to spend a good amount of time just going through the rest of the NHL, taking a look at everything. And, actually, I forgot to show you guys the uh, first overall pick from the Washington Capitals, right? Yeah, I, uh, I almost forgot. There we go. Washington. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, Travis Cameron? No. Main roster, right, there you go, there you go. So Shane Commodore, 79 overall sniper. So he wasn't a, uh, he wasn't a, uh, a, what's it called? Jesus, I can't even talk right now. He wasn't a five-star potential player. But they got two wingers now, Jesus. They got, yeah, they got a nice future set up for them. All right, so let me know what you guys think. And in Arizona, I will see you in the next video.